Muchas gracias. Invitamos ahora a... Thank you very much. Edmund Brown, Governor of California. You have the floor, sir. I'm protecting the vulnerable now. Nice to meet you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll take as my text, if I may, uh, some words of St. Paul to the Galatians. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And what St. Paul said in reference to God, we can also say about God's creation. We have heard what we're doing to that creation, what a trillion tons of CO2 and other greenhouse gases will do. And that text that God is not mocked is not susceptible to compromise, to threats. It's inexorable. It's absolutist. We have to respond. And if we don't, the world will suffer. We will all suffer. In fact, many people, millions are suffering already. Now, to change the world from a fossil fuel-based culture is not easy. But there are plenty of examples where it's happening. So I can bring you the example of California which for many years has been taking on uh, serious environmental challenges. California has, is now uh, deriving 25% of its electricity from renewable sources. And in that source, we don't count nuclear or hydro. Uh, secondly, we have the most efficient buildings because of our building regulations in the entire country. And as a result, California citizens have saved tens of billions of dollars in energy bills. The same is true uh, for our appliance standards, the most efficient in the country. For as far as automobile pollution, we have very strict tailpipe emission standards. And uh, as a result, and because of some changes in Washington, those standards are now adopted uh, as the uh, national standard of America. And those, uh, that source of pollution is going down not fast enough, but steadily. We also have 40% of the electric cars in the United States. But that's, we're not stopping there. We also have a commitment, and my commitment is to increase the renewable uh, portfolio to 50% uh, of uh, the electricity consumed, 50%. And at the same time, reduce petroleum in cars and trucks in the next 15 years. That's quite a challenge, but it can be done. The California economy has steadily reduced its uh, greenhouse gas emissions, particularly on a per capita basis, but its economy is growing over the last decade faster than the economy of the United States as a whole. So there are ways that we can uh, not mock creation or the laws of nature, but live within them. We have to get on the side of nature and not uh, abuse it or go against it. The Pope Francis spoke about the abuse of goods and what our modern world has seen and has enjoyed is the good of petroleum. We are a culture. We got here by means of petroleum on airplanes and cars, our clothes, the food deliveries. It's all based on petroleum. So it's not a bad, it's a good bad when used at the point that 7 billion people now have over a billion cars with the coal plants, the oil and the gas. So we have to make a transition because goods become bads when they are abused at a certain threshold. We know the problem. Yes, but we don't even know how far we've gone or if we've gone. There are tipping points, feedback loops. This is not some linear set of problems that we can predict. Uh, we have to take uh, measures against an uncertain future, which may well be something no one ever wants. We are talking about extinction. We're talking about uh, climate regimes that has not, have not been seen for tens of millions of years. We're not there yet, but we're on our way. And there's an element of irreversibility that requires that we imagine down the road, in the 
and then react. But right in the middle of this problem, we have fierce opposition and blind inertia. And that opposition is well financed. Hundreds of millions of dollars going into propaganda, into falsifying the scientific record, bamboozling people of every country, television stations, political parties, uh, think tanks, PhDs, university personnel. They form a group of people that is attempting to put a cloud of doubt and uncertainty over the clear science that you heard earlier this morning. So we have to fight that propaganda and overcome the inertia and the tremendous opposition. Now, how are we going to do that? First of all, we're going to have to set a clear goal. And that goal is, is just unimaginable. One-third uh, one of the oil that we know exists as reserves can never be taken out of the ground. 50% of the gas can never be used. And over 90% of the coal. Now, that is a revolution. That is going to take a call to arms. And if you look at our national leaders, we're not going to get there. Mayors, you are at the bottom of this power chain, and you've got to light a fire, if I may use that metaphor, uh, in terms of climate change. It's probably the right, wrong one. <laughs> but we have to join together. It's not going to happen. We're not on the road to avoiding the catastrophes that climate change uh, entails. So we have to make a change. This is a real conversion. Using the word transformation, that's a big word. I don't like to use it. It's very hard to transform. I once entered the Jesuit seminary, and our goal was to become perfect, a life of perfection. I can tell you it's very hard. You don't get perfect, and at the end of the day, you don't feel very transformed. But in this case, we may not transform our being, but we're going to have to transform our use of the goods of the world, namely petroleum. And we can do it. And I ask you to join with California and 19 other states and provinces to make a commitment to live within the no more than two degrees, to get us down to two tons per person. America, we can do that. By the way, the United States is over 20 tons per person. California, we're at 12, so we're a little better. But that's because we have a lot of sun and we have a very benign climate. Uh, but we are suffering in the Southwest from drought and the ravages of climate change already. But that, keep it under two, is the goal. In Vietnam, they only use one and a half tons per person. India is maybe two. So the developed world has put in most of the carbon, uh, and we're going to have to take most of it out. It's a big challenge. Not politics as usual. It's not going to happen unless major changes happen. And for uh, the Holy Father, to issue that encyclical, uh, encyclical, that's a change. The role of nature, the interconnectedness of all beings, these are ideas that, while implicit, have never been so clear as they have been made in this encyclical. So let's take some inspiration from the Holy Father. Let's take inspiration from ourselves. But don't be uh, in any way confident or complacent. We have a big mountain to climb. We have very powerful opposition that, at least in my country, spends billions on trying to keep from office people such as yourselves and elect troglodytes and other deniers of the So uh, anyway, that's all I've got to say. I'm, uh, when I look at it, I could quote an Italian, by the way, who said, uh, I shouldn't quote him because he's the founder of the Italian Communist Party. Uh, but he said, uh, pessimism of the intellect, optimism of the will. And if we really sense our collective power, we can exercise the political will to reverse the trends we're on and to turn a new chapter in human history and live uh, in compatible ways with other beings, with ourselves, and protect the most vulnerable and do the, do the right thing. So do this. The church is not trying to become scientists. The Pope isn't a scientist, but he's got scientists. And the Pontifical Academies have laid it out real clear. So it's up to us to make it happen. The mayors, I'm not counting, and the governors, but I'm not counting on the presidents. I'm not counting on the Republican Congress in Washington. So it's up to you guys and you ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you.